Welcome everybody. Today's video finds us over here in Ayutthaya. And I was uh, out exploring the area and I spotted a little temple and I wanted to stop in here and take a look at it. We're gonna take a look at a little temple I didn't even know anything about till right now. I just saw it off on the side of the road. Wat Kok Praia. I'm not sure if it's Wat Kok Praia Ram or Wat Kok Praia. There's two temples with identical names and they've added the ram at the end of it to keep them from getting confused. And this little temple here was rumored to be the site of some of the royal executions, but it's not. That's the one that's over in Ayutthaya itself. So anyway, let's walk down through here and let's take a look and uh, see. There won't be a whole lot, it's just down to the base, but we'll take a look at it anyway. It's right next to a couple of the locals' houses. And I was driving by and I saw the little bricks out here with that little gold streamer. So uh, let's walk over here and let's see what it looks like. So we got the locals here. This is their little house. They're uh, getting ready to go do some spear fishing. Kids are out here playing with, uh, with the ball and stuff like that. And then you can see over here, they got their motorcycles, everything parked. But uh, this is the ruin back here in amongst the trees. And there's a little water, like a little water feature, like a little lake and stuff over here. But uh, yeah, it's just nothing that you would normally think of whenever you went out here. But the temple is back in here. You can see their house here with that pro panel and the cinder blocks. I can hear a mosque off in the horizon. I can hear the call to prayer. There's quite a few mosques and temples in this area. We're off the city island itself. Now this temple had some chetties, had an external wall. It had a little wee hand. That's what this is, is a, is a wee hand. And then there was a chetty right here. And then over there, that's the ubisote or the ordination hall. And then over there in the trees, you could just see a little bit of the water. I know it's hard to see, but this is the foundation of this wee hand. These would have been the columns here that supported the roof, and then the Buddha image would have been right there. Now what's interesting about this building is, I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but right here, you can see these holes. These were what they called eight hole bricks. And what they did is they stuck like a piece of wood in there to, uh, give it the hole so whenever they baked these bricks that it would heat all the way through. And these are bigger than what they used in most of these temples. They used these big eight hole bricks. And there was one even bigger that was a 10 hole brick. And it was uh, easy to tell the difference between them whenever you saw the eight or the 10 holes. But they used that in the construction here which is a kind of a unique thing in this area. And right up here. So we had an external wall around the ordination hall. And then this would have been one of the entrances. And there would have been like an archway going over the top here. So you would have been able to come through it. And they would have had the entrances probably on all the cardinal directions. Now this is the ordination hall. This is the main part of this ruin. You can see right there, these are the marker stones. And they're just down, just laying over here. And you can see the more of the wall here. And this would have been a rectangular shape. It looks like when they restored it, they came here and they poured all this concrete to try to keep the brush and stuff down. And then they would have had a little chetty right there. And then right up here would have been the, like the moat. And you can see right out there through the trees. Oh, we got a farmer over here. So they have a place here for some of their livestock and about a million dogs, holy cow. I see at least 20 dogs over here. So this would have been like the little wall right here. And it was 75 meters by 250 meters. And then you could see here, that would have been the moat surrounding it. And they would have just got the water from over there. Now this was set up here. This is a plains just to the west of Ayutthaya. This is a flat plain. 
And the Burmese came through here, and this is where they set up their stockades when they invaded Ayutthaya in the White Elephant War. And it was like 1865 when they came over here, and then in 1867, the city of Ayutthaya fell to the Burmese. There was a, the king's son betrayed the, uh, the defenders in Ayutthaya, and then after uh, he sabotaged the defenses, and then the uh, Burmese were able to breach the walls and capture the city. Now the, this temple itself, they don't know when it was built or by who. It's not on any of the old maps. And this is kind of cool looking. This is the, the old Buddha head here. And then these are the, the knees and a few other little parts of it. So they still come over here, they burn the candles and they still pray right here. And you can see where they would have made some of these things out of like the bamboo leaves for their special ceremonies. And then there's another building back over here. Yeah, after the city fell, the, uh, most of the people, the inhabitants of Ayutthaya were uh, carted off to uh, Burma. They were uh, all of a sudden forced laborers. That was most of the issues back in the day. They would uh, attack each other. The Thais would attack the Burmese. The Burmese would attack the Thais. The Cambodians were involved in the mix, the same as Lao. They were really needing labor. A lot of disease would kill off the workers, so they would need labor to you know, harvest rice and stuff like that. They also would need treasure, so they would come over here and loot and pillage, and then the Thais would return a favor later on. You can see here, this is the base of a small little hall, and then they had another little wee hand right here that would have had openings to the west and to the east. There's not a whole lot to see now, and it's just surrounded by the jungle. You can see there's the palms and just dense jungle right over here next to that little lake. But that's all there is here to it. It's just a small ruin I had no idea about. So I decided to stop and uh, take a look. And I learned something. I didn't know anything about those bricks till I read a little bit about it. Now this is the same name as that other one that's the royal execution site and i'll pin a comment to that one in this video if you want to take a look at the uh, the video with the same name with the uh, the actual royal execution site and it's in town and it's not in much better shape than this one but it is another temple that's going to finish up a pretty quick little video over here i just thought it was interesting i was like seeing these places this is a temple that Nobody other than me probably will visit. Maybe uh, the locals will come over and do their little ceremonies and pray and stuff like that. But the Thais just pass by on the road. The tourists pass by on the road. Nobody ever stops here. But I like stopping and seeing things like this. It's a little bit off the touristy trail. I like to climb around out here in the tall grass and, and kind of look and just visualize what it would have looked like. And uh, so anyway, if you, uh, if you like this kind of video, smash the like button. If you uh, have any comments or if you've been here <laughs> leave me a comment tell me what you think or if you have any questions let me know or if you want to know anything else about IOTI I'd be ha happy to do my best to answer a question and uh, subscribe if you're new here this is what I do I show you things that I see and tell you a little bit about what I know I show you whatever interests me so if you like this kind of content then definitely uh, subscribe and then you're notified when I post a new video but anyway from over here in IOTI remember life is a journey until next time enjoy mm -hmm.